question, um, Stefan, from a, the, the perspective of a manufacturer of aircraft, what's the role that technology is going to play in reaching these climate change goals that we've uh, mentioned already? Yes, uh, the, if we look in the, what happened in the last 40 years, we have seen that on aviation, the reduction of CO2 emission has been one of the, of the key points. If we look every year, we have a reduction of 2%, thanks to the technology insert that is, uh, that is improving on aircraft. So over uh, 40, 40 years, it's about 70% reduction in CO2. So uh, aviation has been al always going that way. And <coughs> we, we have to carry on, and for sure it's not enough, and we have to, to, to carry on. There is different aspects. There is one aspect which is air traffic management, and we can optimize the air traffic management. And uh, I think that everybody remembers that some times ago, we were holding around the town before landing. Now it's over, thanks to what is happening in Europe and in the uh, US as well, uh, with the Cesar or NextGen. More and more, we will uh, optimize the air traffic management also using uh, artificial intelligence, for instance. Afterwards, in terms of uh, technology on board on the aircraft, we have to consider the complete hand-to-hand uh, -hand process for uh, CO2 emission, because we are talking a lot about uh, battery, and I'm sure we will come back on this. But if we look today, uh, the well to tank and the tank to wake in terms of CO2 emission, well to tank for, for kerosene, it's uh, around $46 per kilowatt hour. And afterwards, when we are flying, this is where we are generating the CO2, and it's around 265 But if we talk now about battery, we are producing the CO2 when we are manufacturing the battery. And then we are producing 133 grams per, per, per kilowatt per water. And uh, when we are flying, if we are using green uh, electricity, we are producing zero. But we have to look at the complete, uh, the complete chain. And we, if we talk about hydrogen now, effectively, if we produce uh, green hydrogen, the benefit is there, and we are producing only 36 grams per water during the, the well to tank, and no production afterwards. So this is one important point that we have to have in mind when we do technology insert in the aviation. The last point on one of the pillars, which is very important as well, is the, the economic equation. Because, uh, you know, the, the kerosene today is 7 cents per, uh, per, uh, per water. If you look at electricity, it's 12. And if you look at hydrogen, it's 39. So we have really, and uh, to work on this, it's uh, the same for the SAF, and the, the cost was, uh, was one of the points that was mentioned before. We have to solve the global equation. So I can hear your reticence, uh, hesitation on some developments, but where do you see the, the, the biggest potential um, for the industry from a technology the, side? The biggest potential for me is uh, for sure hydrogen, and uh, we have to work on hydrogen for many reasons as well for synthetic fuel, because hydrogen can be used for synthetic fuel. But hydrogen is, a, is, a, is not a, a source of energy in itself. It's an energy carrier. And it is the most, uh, it is a, the, the component which is the most uh, on, on the terre, on the earth. So we have, to, we have to work on this and to make it affordable. But for sure, not to be neglected as well as the other technologies such as the battery, because even if we go for hydrogen, we'll produce electricity. And this electricity, because if we are using fuel cell, uh, the dynamic is not there, we will have to have supercapacitor or battery in order to make the link between the fuel cell and the electrical motor. Okay. So you mentioned hydrogen. I'm going to ask you, James, we don't, we don't hear a lot about hydrogen in the, in the aviation space. Why is that? And what's your company doing to address that? Yeah, so um, Zero Avia are developing a hydrogen fuel cell uh, based powertrain. Um, initially, um, we're, we're developing something for much smaller aircraft, you know, up, up to a 20 seat, because that's what um, we think is, is uh, capable with the technology that we've got around mm -hmm. us today. So, so we've decided that we want to make as big an impact as possible, um, even if it is just for 20 seater sort of regional sort of flights of 500 nautical miles. So in a nutshell, that's, that's what we're doing. Um, the reason why probably you hear more about electronic, electric and, and uh, sustainable fuel, well, um, electric 
is obviously part of our consciousness. You know, it's it's been in the AV, uh, the automotive industry for uh, a decade. It's been part of our every day. Uh, the problem is, I guess, for for the layman, is um, that they they believe that it can be easily translated and scaled up to something that can power a, a uh, an aircraft a reasonable distance, a meaningful distance. Whereas, in reality, that's that's much more difficult. Um, and um, the technology really isn't there at the moment, and, and it needs a bit of a step change. On the sustainable fuel side, um, uh, well, your, your previous guests talked a little bit about the, the issues and the challenges there. Um, it is really one of scaling uh, for the sustainable fuel side. So um, hydrogen has always been there, um, but it's only just becoming applicable um, and because hydrogen is a little bit more energy dense and it can get you that little bit further um, now it's starting to become more relevant because you know when you're talking about 500 nautical miles in an aircraft that that's that's a meaningful distance and um, and yeah it means that we're going to have to um, carry fewer passengers because we can't physically get up to the size of the big aircraft, the, the sort of 100-seater pluses at this point, but it is a way of getting around, and if those the passengers are willing to pay a little bit more, not a lot more, a little bit more for their, for their seat, um, then, then that's, that's, that's the way we see things going. Um, uh, an interesting thing about hydrogen and the, the power plants is that compared with a, a traditional gas turbine engine, like your average turboprop, that are usually um, used to power regional aircraft, um, uh, they, the, the operating cost is much lower. So we can actually offer the operators a, a, you know, a, a reduction in their, in their costs, um, and we can offer a retrofit solution. And that's, that's a very, very quick layman's question. What's the impact on CO2 emissions of the hydrogen technology? Well, it's, it's CO2 free, so so the only the only emission is water, basically water vapor. Okay. Um. Thanks for that, um, ladies and gentlemen. You've seen up on the screen this rather fantastic looking um, vehicle called the Flying Whale. Um, this is called the LCA 60T Romain. Yep. Um, what's this all about? Where did the idea come from, and what's uh, what's the niche market that you're looking at? Um, so. When you'll see that, you'll understand, but uh, it's, it's basically an airship. Uh, it's not like the old airship from the 20s and 30s, but uh, it's a, a kind of a revolution in the airship industry, which is kind of a small industry. Um, the, the, the ideas was, was simple. Uh, we're in a globalized world, uh, yet you, in a lot of places where you have to go, where you have to carry stuff or people, um, you don't have uh, uh, sufficient infrastructures, transport infrastructures. Uh, and, and so it happens in countries where th the investment are lacking, but also in countries like ours, where we have infrastructure, but at s in some places you don't find them, um, you don't find the sufficient infrastructures. And I, I'll give you an example uh, with this picture. Uh, today, if you want to bring um, uh, a wind blade on a, on a windmill to, for the installation, uh, it's getting more and more complicated because the site where the, the windmill will be located uh, are more and more difficult to access and the size of the blade are, is getting longer. Um, so we thought that we wanted to, uh, to develop a solution that would, li that would uh, virtually uh, be able to access ev anywhere uh, without landing and being able to uh, load and unload uh, 60 tons of, of cargo. Uh, so not, not using the, the, the existing transport infrastructure or not having to create them. In terms of em lowering consumption and emissions, uh, how is this going to yeah. contribute? So, so the, first, uh, the, the, the first thing to say is that uh, as an airship, um, being an airship helps us to, to achieve that because uh, uh, basically we put a lot of helium inside, so we float. We're like... A, um, yeah, we, we definitely float. We're not comparable to a, to a plane or to a helicopter. Um, so to to um, get out of the of the, um, uh, of, of the of the earth, we don't need 
any energy. We just we just float, and so we do not uh, use fuel. We do not uh, consume fuels to uh, uh, to uh, to get off. We just float. So we need a, a propulsion just to you know to um, to move uh, uh, in in the sky, but not to uh, to stay airborne, um, which is which is the, the first stuff. And and about our s very solution, um, the thing is that we won't need to uh, to land to um, to load and unload the cargo meaning that we won't have any impact on the transport infrastructure again the existing one or uh, the the one that we would need to create to access to a particular point and it's the case on the wind energy industry but you can find any a lot of other examples forestry industry high voltage industry um, What's sort of public perception or, or um, investor perception generally about this? Are you getting skepticism or are people excited about this? No, I w I'd say that it's 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 more and more um, uh, um, excitement. Um, usually, when people think about airship, they think about Hindenburg and the you know this one you know burning in the sky with people inside. Um, that was that was another period of time. And and well, first thing we use helium, not hydrogen. Um, uh, as a lifting gas, uh, but we 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 also try to uh, put back on the stage uh, um, a way of thinking that is different. This this um, solution is a is a it's not a, it's not a very quick one. I mean, we we with the plane we want to go fast as fast as possible from point A to point B. We also, but it's it's a lot of uh, it's another kind of a mindset. Um, to uh, to address and 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 also the fact that we should harm as less as possible the environment when, uh, for example biodiversity when you when you have to to uh, put a road in inside the forest in i don't know let's say in in uh, in, in french guiana to to get some trees somewhere it's it's a nonsense when you think about it so it's more and more excitement okay um, Stefan, back to you. You mentioned um, uh, a lot of the focus on electric aircraft. Um, where do you see, if you had to predict, say, 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, what would be the state of the industry um, as far as electric aircraft is concerned? And why, what are the blockers, what are the hurdles to stop us going even further and faster? Yeah, we, we, when we're talking about uh, electric aircraft, uh, it will come from the bottom first. And this is why we have uh, more than 100 projects uh, on, uh, on electrical VTOL, uh, vertical takeoff and landing. Uh, the problematic is uh, when you have to manage uh, full electrical aircraft with battery in particular, is how you transport the electricity and the power. Mm. Because uh, if you uh, I if link to the power, you need to increase the voltage. And increasing the voltage, if you go higher with lower pressure, then you have arcing issue to solve. And this is one of the key problematic on full electrical. Today, we have 100 115 watt uh, volt on, uh, on an aircraft. The 787, there are 200 more, little bit more than 200, not distributed. When we start to distribute, this is where there is a problem. Mm. Uh, afterward, the second point, if you are using battery, an elect uh, electrical battery, you have to contain the, the thermal runaway, which is one of the key points, and uh, you have seen with the lithium battery the, the, the issue. So wha what I see on the electrical uh, aircraft is that uh, up to nine pa packs or uh, 20 packs, so you can still have on short range uh, battery, but when you go beyond this, you have to go hybrid. Mm. Uh, full electrical aircraft uh, won't work. So in five years from now, I see hybrid aircraft uh, on the size of 20, 20 packs, and uh, being hybrid with the SAF and uh, hydrogen uh, could be very, very useful. And uh, so, in five years from time, from now, it will be will be there. If we now look uh, ten years, I think regional aircraft and our market, our segment market, will go hybrid, and uh, we will have this kind of technology available, provided that we solve the economical equation and the uh, the supply of hydrogen on the synthetic fuel. And then, on the longer term, you uh, we will go more on the on, on the long range. For the long range, today the solution that we can see, and it's not an electrical site, it's more using the air traffic management and potentially to do a, a formation flight. You have seen that Airbus has communicated on this. Uh, instead of putting the aircraft uh, 
uh, in the train over the ocean, you can put them in a, in a way they are using the, the vortices of the, of, of the front mm. runner in order to get uh, up to 10% reduction in fuel, which is, could be available quite rapidly in the short term. Okay, so it sounds reasonably positive um, from your side if you look at that time frame. What about on the hydrogen side? What are the blockers to you going even further and faster in the development of your solution? Um, but I, I think what we've got to do is just um, is, is start working on um, something that's achievable, first of all. Um, uh, and our target at the moment is to go uh, 500 nautical miles. Um, so we are, we are starting test flights um, this summer, actually, uh, between Orkney and uh, Edinburgh, um, just on a six-seater aircraft for now. Um, and then we're scaling up to a, a, a twin-engine 20-seater. Uh, um, that will then hopefully um, um, get us um, an understanding of how we develop the, the uh, hydrogen technology. Um, to go beyond that, um, we have to start thinking about, and, and for the bigger aircraft, we have to start thinking about liquid hydrogen. Um, and burning um, liquid hydrogen in you know, traditional gas turbine engines, um, which is the next step. And that, that presents a whole load of other problems. You know, How do you keep liquid hydrogen cool? Where do you store it? Um, so there's a lot of development to be done. But uh, the approach that we're taking is, is very, very step by step. Just see what's in front of us, what, what we, we can do with the technology available to, to today, and how we can have as big an impact as possible. Mm. Um, okay. Roman, final question for you. Um, it's quite an unusual solution you're talking about. Do you feel that you're able to learn, though, from other parts of the aviation sector or other industries through cooperation, or is this something that you guys are just doing on your own? No, 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 definitely not. Uh, so we. Talking about propulsion, for example, the, the first um, the first version of this airship will be um, will come with a hybrid propulsion, uh, and you know we're a, a young company and and nothing flies in our in, a, in our on, on our side yet, um, but and and you know if we if we if we were able to put a, a full electric propulsion with a hybrid energy inside, uh, we would have chosen this, but technologically. Technologically speaking, today it's impossible for what we want to do. So that's why we, we're going to go hybrid first. Um, and but but we already have a roadmap on the on for the next steps. Again, it's about steps, and we are investing also in hydrogen. You and un you've understood that it's it's now the holy grail. But uh, um, we, for example, we now have the government government of Quebec in our uh, shouldering structure. Uh, we also have uh, like. The Airbus of, of China, uh, AVIC, um, and in these countries, they are working a lot of on, on hydrogen, for example, and that just on the on the propulsion side, but on every technologies we want to implement into this new uh, aircraft, we are working with a lot of partners uh, everywhere in the world, and we uh, 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 we we definitely also have to to uh, to tie with uh, uh, people working in the in the um, uh, marine industry or or uh, you know. Uh, training industry uh, so yeah we we just have to uh, to work with everybody okay it's very exciting we look forward to seeing these as well as the uh, hydrogen powered and electric aircraft in our skies very soon ladies and gentlemen we have to draw this to a close unfortunately thank you for your attention just a closing word from myself um if there's one thing one thing i'd like you to take away from this session it's that the aviation sector is is not an industry which is burying its head in the sand we know we have uh, an environmental impact we've taken responsibility for it but we have a plan we're achieving progress against that and i think when you hear um, from the presentations this afternoon from these um, bright minds of people across the sector looking at all the areas of activity that we can engage in to reduce our environmental impact i hope you have the same confidence i have that we're going to achieve that but thank you very much for your attention thank you to all our speakers <laughs>